hotel. They're doing a lot of evacuations. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is part of living out in California here. Our guide, Ryan, got a call from his wife. We got a fire that is evacuating the area where they live in. We're going to drop the cameras, go help them. Made it to Chico, California. As you can hear, got ambulance, fire trucks, everything. Traveling the world, fishing, enjoying the great outdoors. Those are things that would have seemed impossible to me when I was a kid growing up in the mountains of West Virginia. I'm a lucky man and I never want to forget it and I'm hoping that sharing my experiences with folks will inspire them to do the same. I'm Curtis Fleming and these are my Fly Rod Chronicles. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's presents Fly Rod Chronicles with Curtis Fleming. We'd also like to thank these fine sponsors. Yeti, Toyota, the state of West Virginia, Hook, and Carter Motors. You know, I didn't come up with the saying that trout live in beautiful places. Um, I have added to that saying, saying that fish in general, when you're fly fishing for them, usually take you to some incredible and beautiful places. The Feather River is something that I remember reading about when I was a little kid, and I always wanted to go to Northern California and fish the Feather. Um, I knew it was beautiful from the photos, and people that has fished it. But when we got there and got to see how beautiful it was in person, um, it definitely lived up to its expectations. We did, like, we're gonna be moving fast. Like, we're just, you know, we're looking for easy, easy fish, and then, you know, the boat's gonna be moving. Um, and sadly, it's a little bit of a race, uh, just because there, well, there's many people in front of us, behind us, you know. Uh, we will catch 90% of our fish before lunch. You know, going to a new place like the Feather River, uh, it only makes sense for us to be able to choose some of the top guides. That's what's cool is going to these areas and finding local guides. And, and Ryan, who has, has fished just numerous trips on the feather, just totally made sense. So Westervelt, they, they highly recommended Ryan. Plus, you know, Ryan's got a nonprofit foundation called Cast Hope, and it's about kids. And, you know, that's what we're all about with Fly Rod Chronicles. So, when we got on the phone and started talking about him being our guide, it was really exciting. And plus, just hearing the enthusiasm in Ryan's voice, knowing that we were coming out there to film a TV show, we knew we had the right guy. Good morning. Good morning buddy. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Good, good. Shorts in winter, right? That's right. Yeah, huh? This guy's style. tough, Rob, isn't he? Huh? Yeah. See, these guys are tough out here. It's a little warmer than West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, yeah, we, we got snow over there. Steelhead fishing in 75 degree weather. You know. You gotta love it. You gotta love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right, we'll get you guys stuff going yep. in the rig and we'll roll. And okay. You know, I think most people think that you have to go to Alaska to get salmon runs. Um, you know, the last time we were with Westervelt and we went up to Redding, we got to see the salmon in the lower sack. Um, on the feather, after we put in, uh, I heard a very familiar sound, and that was the salmon talking to us. And what I mean by saying that, um, you know, the, the, the salmon was coming upstream um, without getting into the birds and the bees. They were coming upstream for a reason and to spawn. And, you know, we were fortunate enough because the skies were so blue and 
and it was just a beautiful morning to, to really get creative as a film crew and get some of that incredible you know, mating ritual of a salmon and them just going out of water and, and jumping and, and doing their thing. It was really cool. All right, Rob, it's your turn. One of our goals was for Rob to catch his first steelhead on the fly. With that being said, I didn't feel sorry for Rob because on the way to the boat launch, he told me about all of the exotic trips that he's been on, you know, like Alaska, and, and he fished a lot down towards San Diego, and he's done a lot of saltwater fishing. So even though that was our goal, I, you know, I wanted him to catch the first steelhead, but I wasn't expecting him to catch the second and third. But um, it was really cool though. Rob was just a super nice guy. And you could just tell without words coming out of his mouth that the emotion just came down and, and, and got into him because he was just so jacked about catching that first still had on the fly. Oh, stop now. Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> wow. Oh, huge. Rob. <laughs> That's your first one ever. We're number one, yeah. Number one. Did you tag it? These still had, they, they're amazing. They're just beautiful in the fall. Um, you know, they got their full tuxedos on. They're just gorgeous. And, you know, Rob catches that first fish. We get to get some photos. We get to cherish, you know, his moment. And, and the greatest part about it is, you know, how we do the release of the week. And, you know, to see Ryan and Rob and our camera crew work together to get Rob's first fish and release it back into the Feather River. It's cool stuff. Well, Rob didn't have any problem explaining to me that now he's up a couple fish on me. Um, not just once, maybe a couple times that he informed me that uh, I didn't have any fish to the boat. So, you know, that, that's what makes a fishing trip fun is when buddies can get out there and pick on each other. But um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw in there a little beginner's luck because as you can see in this one catch, you know, uh, the footage will tell, but Rob, Rob catches this on his back cast. I'm, I'm just, just telling you. Hold on, I got a fish on the back cast. Can you believe it? Yes. I got a fish on my back cast. I think Rob's playing a game. He said he said he said he's never done this before. Oh, oh, underneath. Up again. Atta boy. Nice, Rob. <laughs> catch him when I don't intend to catch him. There you go. We'll take it. <laughs> There's no secret, I really don't like waking up at three in the morning to go fishing. I like the, the hype of let's wait till the bugs start working and let's sleep in and, and go when the sun gets warm on the water. Um, these are fresh fish. The steelhead follow the salmon run and they're eating the eggs of the salmon. So it's kind of like if you're the first one there that morning, your chances are better. And um, we were definitely the first ones there because you know we launched it before daybreak. You know, with the whole scenery of, you know, just the mist coming off the water and, the, you know, a beautiful day with the fog clearing and it breaking daylight was amazing. But once you hook in to a steelhead, it's like, man, I did this. I, you know, we just went almost 3,000 miles from coast to coast to make this happen. Everything came together. 
and then it's one fish and it's two fish and the next fish and and it just keeps going through your mind of of the journey that these fish made upriver to get to a point where we as human beings came from the east coast to be on the west coast it's it's emotional to me and then you know you pick up a fish that's as beautiful as a steelhead um, you know it, it doesn't have to be big it's a steelhead it's it's a fish that has traveled many miles upstream to meet your fly it's it's very cool it's Westervelt Ecological Services, time for conservation. So this property is pretty unique. We're at the confluence of two different rivers. We've got the Cosumnes coming down on the north and the McCallamy coming down on the west. And they meet just downstream of this property. So we're providing floodplain habitat for really both rivers here. And you get steelhead, which will come up out of the delta, and they'll actually find this as a backwater refuge. And so even though they'll oftentimes be spawning up on the McCallamy River, this is really some of their primary habitat. What is the long-term goal for the ecological services? We buy properties with long-term stewardship in mind. We have a conservation team that really works to take care of these landscapes. Every time we do a project, we protect it in perpetuity. We're managing it forever. And so we record a conservation easement on the property and then we set aside a big chunk of money, an endowment, to take care of this site uh, forever. And so we've got a team that'll come out and do biological surveys. We've got folks that'll do maintenance on the landscape. And so we really are planning on being invested in this site um, as long as we're around. Yeah. And what's pretty neat is you can see the changes over time. I was the project manager on this site, and so I did the initial design and project permitting and watched it convert from a site that had corn and grapes on it to something that 10 years later, you've got fish swimming in the channel back behind me. And I'll come out here, I've taken my daughters fishing from this point that we're standing right here, and my daughter caught her first largemouth bass kind of right down in the water there. Uh, it's, it's really neat to be able to come out to these sites and see how it not only changes the landscape, but how it changes the people that can come onto these sites. Yeah. So, you know, everything worked that day. I mean, the sun came up the way it was supposed to. It was a beautiful morning. Um, gosh, everything from our gear and everything just went together the way it was supposed to be. And, and that morning we looked up and, you know, the blue sky it was just gorgeous. And, and all at once we noticed a, a big cloud coming in. And I don't know if it was me or one of the camera staff that had said, hey, what's that cloud? And, and instantly one of the guides said, well, that's, that's from a fire. We get fires out here all the time. So um, I don't remember anything being coming from that area, but uh, the wind changes a lot out here. So I'm pretty sure it's from one of the fires. Well, we didn't know that it was from the fire. And, um, and we didn't know until actually one of our guides, Chuck, intercepts a phone call where Ryan's wife is desperately trying to get a hold of him because their family's being evacuated. The fire is leaving and, and has destroyed Paradise, leaving Paradise and, and heading toward Chico. And just hearing Ryan get that message, um, everything got real like real quick hey sorry the paperwork for what like all the will stuff so are you guys leaving right now you guys this hotel's getting evacuated Hey, we're out of here. Yeah. Seriously. That, I know. That, I know. Yeah. We'll go, man. Whatever we can do to help. Where is the, can you see the fire? Uh, okay. All right. 
Okay, I'm pulling the anchor and we're gonna, we're, we're coming that way, okay? You know, when Ryan got off the phone with his wife, we knew it was time to get out of there. You know, so after Ryan and Chuck rose us to safety, it's, you know, it, it, it's grab that boat, get it to the back of the vehicle, and let's get down the road. Um, we were kind of out in the country, so we were trying to make it to the city. We had to focus on getting Ryan to his family. Um, I, I've never experienced chaos like this. It's kind of like the end of the world as I think it will be. Everyone was in panic mode. The, the traffic, um, you know, each one of our camera guys was on their phones trying to GPS, how do we get Ryan through the city, around the city, however we can to his family. And there's just one car after another. And this cloud of smoke that went, that, that made everything dark. Um, I mean, by noon, it, it looked like 10 o'clock at night. It was total darkness. Um, street lights are flashing, sirens, and, and you know, the first responders, they're on their way. Um, it's, it, it, it's happening. This is real. And Ryan kept saying, you know, we got to get you guys back to your hotel. And again, I commend him for worrying about us when we're like, no, get your family and, and we'll figure all this out. But it's, it's, it's one of the most chaotic things I've ever seen in my life. You know, we're privileged to be partnered with Westervelt Ecological Services. We live and breathe conservation. They live and breathe conservation. And we get educated by just being partnered with them. So if you want to learn a little more about what Westervelt Ecological Services does or maybe can do for you, um, check these guys out. You know, I was always a person that was the last one out of the locker room. Um, I will tell you, this is the fastest I've ever packed my bags and got down the road. And, and when I say got down the road, um, that's what we needed to do, you know, with knowing that the fires was coming our way, the winds was shifting and swirling. Um, it, it's one of those things that I probably really won't know what I did until maybe we go back and look at the footage and talk about it, but I just remember it was about heading south and getting out of town. And, and with that being said, you know, there's also 100,000 other people thinking the same that we are, that they got to get out of town. Um, it, it, you know, people are fighting for their lives at this point. You know, we were blessed to be in Northern California and to be on the Feather River. I think planning for this trip was one of the most exciting things that's happened to me. What took place during this trip, you know, catching the fish was great, but the tragedy of the fire will never leave me as a person. You know, we went out there to film a conservation segment and then go on a trip of a lifetime. Well, this trip turned into a trip of a lifetime. Right now, today, and forever, I will never have more of an appreciation for our first responders, our people that get a beep, get a phone call, and goes out 
and serves and protects. Our partners, Westervelt, you know, them helping out during this. I will forever have a new look on what they're about because fishing didn't matter at that point. What mattered was lives and the lives that affected us during that time was our guide Ryan and his family who was evacuated. And when you get that warning, it's serious. And to see the town of Paradise burned down and lives lost, I'll be touched forever. And fishing will go on, life will go on, but the memories of that trip will be embedded in my memory bank forever. Come back next week, and thanks for hanging out with Fly Rod Chronicles. And I'm just a fishing bum If I don't have gas and I still got my thumb I gotta get there one way or another I'm a fishing bum